Hey guys, the Cube Dude here, and today I'll be doing a full review of the Geeker Smart Cube. So going over the packaging very quickly, it comes in this little box, and comes with this little base, which sticks into the bottom, and it works with a few other cubes. In this case, I have a GANS RSM, and it works perfectly with that. It's a nice little way to display your cube. So not only that, it comes with this little charging thing that plugs into both sides, and it unfortunately does not come with a micro USB cable, which is how it charges. So what you're gonna need when you buy one of these is a micro USB, which looks like that. And then that fits directly into this, and then that will be plugged in to the cube. Now this thing does not hold a charge. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to keep this thing on and then plug this in, and then the way you know it's charging is when this thing glows. Connecting the cube straight out of the box was a little bit confusing at first, but what I realized is this thing needed to be fully charged. So once again, just use the micro USB that you have, this thing, and plug it into the wall or into your computer, wherever you want to charge it. And then once it's fully charged, then you'll be able to connect it to your phone. Now I'll be going over the app features in a little bit, but now I'm gonna quickly go over just the cube itself. So first of all, the shades on this cube are terrible. So what I did is I restickered it with my color scheme, which is regular white, regular red, regular green, and then fluorescent blue, orange, and yellow. And these are the colors on the cubicle.us. And when restickering it, you have to make sure to keep the blue side blue, the orange side orange, the green side green, white side white, yellow yellow, red red. That way it'll somewhat match up with the app. So this cube is very, very good for what it is. Uh, I'd say it's pretty much on par with all the speed cubes nowadays, especially for this being a Bluetooth cube. Um, the magnet strength is pretty strong. You can definitely feel that, and it's kind of difficult to do that due to the magnet strength. But corner cutting is really good for what it is. It's maybe a little bit under 45, and reverse is just not just line to line yet. The cube is very smooth once it's turning, and it rarely ever locks up. Once again, I'd say this is pretty much your average speed cube. And for what it is, a Bluetooth cube, I think the price of $32 from AliExpress, I think that's a pretty reasonable price. This cube comes in at about 57 millimeters, it appears to be. This is a Gans RSM, which is 56, and it's just slightly bigger. As for where you can get stickers that will perfectly fit this Gicker cube, you can most likely get those on the cubicle. Uh, they're not up yet. What I did is I contacted the cubicle and asked them to send me stickers that they think would fit. And I think these are GANS stickers, not 100% sure, but by the looks of them, they look pretty similar. And I know you might be sort of looking at the hole in the green and the blue. I kind of had to make those a little bit bigger than I anticipated, and so I sort of botched them with a little knife. It still gets the job done. This thing still charges with that, and so that was pretty much all I wanted. So first, looking at the centerpieces, here is a normal centerpiece that is not a charging port. I'm not going to even bother trying to take that out. Uh, and then there is the green side, which is one of the charging sides. And then inside, it looks like all the electronics or whatever is in there, all the wires, uh, seems like that's all encased in the little spherical core. As for the corner and the edge, here's a closer look at the corner, so nothing too special. And then as for the edge, again, nothing too special, pretty much standard. Now I'm just gonna briefly go over all the features of the app. All right, so in order to pair this cube up with your phone, just go ahead and charge it for about an hour out of the box, open up the app, and to get to the app, you look up G-I-I-K-E-R on the App Store, and then download the app in either English or Chinese, open it up and hit connect. And then your nearby Supercube should be there. And then once it's connected, then you can test it out on the top left. And so here, I'm gonna line up the blue. Okay, so it's working. And there you can see the battery, the total moves it's made, the cube name. So just briefly going over the features, we have Cubic Run on the top, which tests your reaction. And so what it does is it does moves, and then you try and mimic it within a certain time limit, and it gets faster and faster and adds more moves. And then when you get one wrong, then, it, then you fail, and the game's over. Moving on to the next one, Crazy Puzzle. It times how long it takes you to match a certain face. And so the next one is complete clone, which sounds exactly like what it is. Uh, so we basically want to clone the entire cube and it gives you sort of this, sort of the layout of it. And then at times how long it takes you to get there. So in this case, it's just the simple that. So it took 0.6 seconds. 
cubic escape is, I think, kind of helpful. Uh, this is going to be more helpful for beginners. And what it does is it puts this little wizard on the cube, and then you have to sort of move it around. So in this case, the wizard is right here, and then you want to move it to right there. And so what we're going to do is, uh, while trying to avoid the bombs, I think we're going to do that, that, oh, in that case I hit a bomb. Uh, so I'm pretty far, I'm on like level 27, I think. So they get kind of hard, uh, but they start out pretty easy. And that's going to be helpful for beginners who have a hard time sort of visualizing how to move one piece to another spot on the cube within a certain amount of moves. All right, now the best feature on the cube is by far the smart timer, which is the little clock on the top. And so what that does is it times how long it takes you to solve the cube. And it knows when it starts and it knows when uh, the cube is solved. So you just do a scramble, hit ready, and then do your solve. If the cube is scrambled, and you hit ready, and then you do the, uh, the solve, it will then tell you, uh, on the left here, it says 0.323 seconds per move. It tells you how many moves it took, and then if you hit the little arrow, it tells you the moves that you actually did. Now, in order to see how much of a difference this had, I did an average of 50 on this cube, and the way I did it is I did the scramble. I had CS timer pulled up on my computer, I did the scramble that CS timer gave me. I hit ready on this, and then I did a stack matted time. And what that would do is the stack mat would give me the time that it took me to solve it, kind of like normally, how I normally would practice with the amount of time it takes to pick up the cube and then drop the cube and stop the timer. However, the smart timer app only measured the time it took to actually solve the cube. And I found that the difference was a little over half a second. So imagine taking your personal best average of 5, average of 12, or even single, and subtracting 0.5 seconds from it. That's how much time this app saves you. I found that occasionally, both on the computer, which I will show you in a second, and on this app, that sometimes the cube would uh, sort of come out of alignment, I guess. So I'd do a move too fast, or somehow it wouldn't register, and then this cube would be solved, but then on the actual app it would be maybe one turn away, or it'd be completely scrambled. If that happens, all you have to do is go on the top left and hit reset. And then you can uh, tell them that the status is not the same. In this case it is, but let's just say it's not. You're gonna hit no, and then you can either reset by solve or by inputting where the colors are on the cube. So in this case, I'm gonna do reset by solve. The cube is solved, hit solved, and then yes, reset it. Now it should be reset if it was out of alignment. The battery life on this thing is pretty good. Uh, I think I've only charged it about twice, and it's lasted about a week and a half now. And so, so far, Battery life has been very, very promising on this. All right, so the final feature on the top is the little rocket. And what that does is if your cube is scrambled and you want it solved, then you just hit go, and then it'll tell you how to hold it, which is white on top, blue on the front, and orange on the right. Hit go, and then just follow along with it. And there it tells you it'll take nine moves. And there we go. Another cool thing you can do with this cube is you can actually connect it to your computer. Lucas Guerin, who I saw at Western Championships, I let him borrow this cube, and then, and then he did some sort of coding magic and got it to work on a computer. So once you get your cube, all you do is go to bluetooth.cubing.net, and apparently this web Bluetooth function is only available on Chrome. So once you go to bluetooth.cubing.net, I'll have a link to that in the description, you just go ahead and hit connect on the top right, and then this little window should pop up, and then you go ahead and pair your cube, and then you should hear a beep. Just like that. And then once it's connected, uh, I think one of the coolest features of this, similar to the app, is it knows, uh, first of all, when you do your turns, and it keeps track of U2s. Uh, however, however, it'll consider a U with a pause, and then a U, just a U, U. Now, you do have to scroll here to see what moves we're being done, although uh, it does cancel moves. So if I do a sexy reverse sexy, then it'll just cancel those. But if I want to do soon, it'll count that. So once you have this cube scrambled, you just go ahead and hit mark end of scramble. 
and then you go ahead and do your solve. And just like on the app, it'll track the moves you do. And then once you're done, you can hit analyze, and then that'll bring you to someone else's program, which then breaks down the scramble, tells you how many moves it took you to do cross, first pair, second pair, third, fourth pair, uh, OLL and PLL, and then also the AUF. And then here you can see your stats, so how many moves it took. And so I think that's one of the coolest features. On the app, uh, it didn't really break it down for you just like that, but thankfully Lucas was able to do that. So I mentioned this in my last video in the unboxing, but I just wanna briefly go over once again why this cube goes against regulations and why it would not be allowed in competition. So the first regulation that this goes against is regulation 3L, which says a puzzle may have a logo on a colored part. If it does, it must have at most one colored part with a logo. So the main thing here is it says a logo, so one logo. This little charging port right here would be considered two logos, so one on the green, one on the blue. So there's the first issue. The second regulation that this goes against is regulation 2I, which says while competing, competitors must not use electronics or audio equipment. For example, cell phones, MP3 players, dictaphones, additional lighting. And so this would be considered an electronic because it connects via Bluetooth to your phone. The third issue that this cube could run into is 2K2, which says at the discretion of the WCA delegate, a, a competitor may be disqualified from some events if the competitor is suspected of cheating or defrauding the officials during the competition. Now, the main issue here is that if someone submits this cube, as I mentioned in my last video, uh, it's for use at a competition and replaces these stickers and makes it look like a legitimate cube without little charging ports. And then they go sit in the waiting area and then they have their phone or computer out. I doubt they'd have their computer because that's more noticeable. But let's say they pull up their phone. They can then see the scramble that the scramblers applies to the cube before they actually go out to inspect the cube. And I think that's going to be the biggest issue. Uh, I think that will have the most serious consequence if someone is found doing that. So I highly recommend do not try and use this cube in competition. Overall, I think this cube would be a great addition to any collection. I think this cube is definitely worth the $32, and I think that this new realm of Bluetooth cubing has a lot of potential in the future. I highly recommend anyone buy this and try it out for themselves. I'll put a link in the description for where you can buy it. And if anyone has any other suggestions for the app or the website, leave them in the comments below. I can't promise the creators of the app will see it. However, I know Lucas will be sure to take your suggestions and hopefully add a bunch of cool features if he's able to. If you have any questions for me, leave them down below. I hope you all enjoyed and thanks for watching.